And good morning, folks. Another edition of the Go Blue Wolverine Radio Hour on Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTKA.com. Uh, you can always find the podcast on WTKA.com, but if you want the, the full shebang, the whole kit and caboodle, you can get the, the podcast, the video, and see the guys actually breaking the game down uh, when we put it up on GoBlueWolverine.com a little bit later on today. Obviously, team coverage, recruiting coverage, and uh, breakdowns and analysis. And I want to introduce the team. Uh, first, want to want to give a special shout out to our camera guy, uh, Ryan, who came in to shoot for the first time today. So good morning to Ryan. Uh, and then I want to introduce the the crew, the panel, uh, the the veterans as we're winding down on the regular season, kind of coming full circle. Get some analysis from the guys that have provided for us the most this season. Starting off first with uh, with Stan Edwards after a two or three week hiatus. Stan, good morning. Good morning, Sam. It's cold out there, man. Yeah, I hear you. It's <laughs> yeah. cold out there. Yeah, man. It's. Uh, I wish I could say that was the reason for the. What the heck is that? Oh, that's my man. That's my man, Marcus Ray. Okay, uh, so Sam, you and I talk till Marcus get his act together and don't realize that we're on live right now, and he's not, and he's trying to Twitter, tweet, and get his groove on, and we're trying to do a radio show. Hey, you know what? We need a little levity at a at a time where you know you're you're trying not to you're trying not to sulk and mope, uh, you know, about the outcome of a game and, and leave it to Marcus Ray to to pick us up, to give us some Ray's light. Marcus, good morning. Good morning, Sam. I'm How good. you doing? Good morning, Stan. I'm good, man. Good morning. Ready to go. You uh, know, another day, another dollar. All right. And then on the phone, as he is every week, uh, from Go Blue Wolverine the Magazine and GoBlueWolverine.com, Tom Beaver. Tom, good morning. Hey, sir. hey guys. How you doing? Hey, It'll man. be a good Thomas. show today with Marcus Ray in there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I hear you. Well, here, here's the thing. So 24-21. Uh, Michigan falls on the road to Iowa. And, uh, you know, it's a familiar theme when talking about this game. Uh, you know, offense, offensive ineptitude, uh, particularly in the second half. I mean, when you have a, a defense that gets four turnovers, scores a touchdown, uh, it wasn't enough to win the game, but it should have been, is, is what we boil down to, is what it boils down to. I mean, we say all the time, uh, you know, if you didn't win the game, then you didn't do enough. You know, whatever side of the bar that you're talking about. But on this day, on that field, with four turnovers and a touchdown, and they got you a score, that's a game that you should win. That's a game that you do win if your offense mounts anything. But goose egg in the second half, outscored 17 to nothing, didn't uh, get, didn't get a, um, uh, a third down conversion until late in the fourth. Uh, but it wasn't enough as they were not able to get in the field goal range or score a touchdown, obviously. And, you know, we're left we're left talking about some of the same things that we began talking about early in the season, guys. And I, I don't want to gloss over what a splendid effort we saw from a guy like Frank Clark. I mean, sure. you can point out sure. some guys, particularly on defense, that have gotten better as the season has gone on. And Frank Clark is one of those guys. He was That was his best game as a Wolverine, if, in my opinion. If we're going – we have won games and there's been a major struggle in overtime and, you know, against, you know, lesser opponents. And we were still very critical. What we also need to be fair to this team is when they do lose. And obviously that's what happened yesterday. When there is some solid play, we need to talk about that and play that up. That's only being fair. In my opinion, uh, the defense, it's a very, very interesting take on the defense. The biggest thing with the defense is the inconsistencies. You'll find some series, they absolutely look like a top 10 defense. Then you'll find another series, they look really pedestrian, confused, overwhelmed, and even passive at times. A cornerback's playing 7, 10 yards off the ball, and teams have picked up on that, and they'll just run a 5, 7-yard hitch and move the chains. But sometimes you'll get guys, and the encouraging part about this is how certain guys are starting to play at this time of the year, to your point, Sam. Starting to wind down. Jake Ryan is starting to get in the slowly in the football shape because he can play. We talked about this last year. He can flat play. Frank Clark is starting to really become what we thought he would be playing the entire year. I still have a little confusion and maybe issues on how he's being used on pass rush. But 
that being said, he had a, he had a pretty strong game yesterday. And when when you see that toward the end of the year, you get encouraged about going into the next game and into the bowl game and then even to next year. But the defense is very very strong yesterday. Although they didn't, they gave up 17 points in the second half. I saw some things in there that I really like. Yeah, you know, a couple of things, and I w- I want you to get on this as well, Marcus. I I think it's you know when I talk about the defense, I'm it, it's it's relative. Relative to the beginning of the season, I, you know, we're, we're talking about a unit that's playing a, a whole lot of young guys over there, too, except you're starting to see their young guys. On, let, me, on Sam, let me cut you off, man. Let me cut you off. I'm sorry, because I'm a little sick of the young guy comment. If you average 60 plays a game offense and defense and you get up nine or 10 games, that's close to six to seven hundred snaps. You're not young anymore. All right, that's my, and that's my point. You're not young anymore. Well, you got young guys. Nah, on we're well, not you got, young anymore. We got players. Well, Whether they're young or not, unless they've been, unless they are new, and been hurt. Just use the class. Yeah, play like that. yeah, you, yeah, you got you. So yeah, exactly. You got you got. But that's not even an excuse. You, but, when you play 700 snaps, there's nothing young about your game before. And that and, and my and, labeling the. And to to my point, yeah, you got freshmen and red shirt freshmen and sophomores on that side of the ball that from the beginning of the season to now are playing better football. Chris Wormley playing better football right now. Willie Henry playing better football right now. So you can see the growth in some of those some of those guys on the on the defensive side of the football. And yet, you know, in the in the middle portion of the game, and you saw this in the second half when James Ross gets knocked out of the game, when when Desmond Morgan gets knocked out of the game, they really took advantage uh on on the ground. And yet, even with that, even with the the inconsistency that we saw defense defensively in the second half, still I feel like that kind of effort with four turnovers and, and a touchdown, I feel like that should have been enough for this team to, to, to come out on top. It was enough for the team to come out on top in the first half. See, when you see football is a game of two halves, Sam. So what Michigan did, they got a defensive touchdown on the first play of the game for Iowa. That was huge. But see, Iowa's offense was moving the ball. They have 400 total yards. Mm-hmm. That's where I think the ball's being dropped. Iowa moved up and down the field. They just turned it over. Okay, so they had a bend but don't break offense, if you will. But they knew going into halftime they were going to come back and win because the way they drive at the end of the, of the uh, second half, they botched the field goal. But there was a kickoff return in there that actually led. It actually led to that field goal attempt which gave Iowa a lot of confidence. See, Iowa's defense played extremely well when it mattered most. Our defense didn't. Go back to that touchdown pass where they just threw a slant, he beat four people, and went down the field 55 yards. See, our defense, like Stan said, is inconsistent per drive. I think they're inconsistent per half. That was excellent lights-out football with three interceptions and, you know, playing well in the first half, got a defensive score. Iowa missed a field goal. They had a field goal blocked. They got down in the red zone and got stopped. Next thing you know, it's a totally different ball game because Michigan still couldn't run the ball. Michigan still couldn't sustain drives, and they only got 10 first downs. So I give Iowa's defense more credit, but there are some individuals on our defense that are playing better, playing well. Blake Countess has five interceptions. That's the most since Todd Howard, six in 2000. Ray Taylor has four, I think, on the season. Yeah, so we got some guys making plays, but collectively as a unit, all the parts are not there and they're not clicking uh, all at the same time. You know, when you you compare it to the other side of the football, though, and I'm looking at the the drive chart for Iowa, again, uh, you don't have – you don't have a, a stellar – this isn't a top 10 defense. Uh, and I wasn't expecting it to be. But I, I'm looking at, at progress. And you look at this drive chart, interception, missed field goal, then a touchdown. Then they turn it over on downs. Then interception. Then punt, punt, fumble. This is uh, Michigan's defense. So interception, missed field goal, touchdown. Downs, interception, punt, punt, fumble. Then they turn. Then they score the touchdown uh, uh, in, in the, uh, the first drive of the second half. And then punt, punt, interception. Then a touchdown. I mean, you, you had a defense that that's standing up. May, may, they're giving up yards. They're bending, like you said. But a number of times they didn't break, giving your offense an opportunity to do something. And in this game, I, I can't. Well, say in football, just because your defense playing well doesn't mean it's going to lead to points all the time. So, like, the defense played well enough to keep Michigan in the game or at least give them a chance to get a lead. But remember, they play football too. So, 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 talk to me about talk to me, you guys, talk to me about Michigan's offense in, in, in this contest because while I certainly I, I think it's appropriate to give Iowa's defense defense credit, how much of it was stellar play by Iowa and how much of it was the inconsistency 
of Michigan. When I say I'm not talking about any one thing, I mean, I think the thing that you seize upon when you talk about Michigan's offense, for me, that's that's troublesome is that you aren't talking about one thing. You aren't just talking about play calling. You aren't just talking about protection. You aren't just talking about drop passes. You aren't just talking about uh, you know, Eric everything. Rose. You're talking about you're talking about everything. It's a it's a breakdown of one of those things. It seems like on every play. Well, for me, we have spent the entire year trying to decide and differ and use different words every week how we have described this anemic offense. And I'm running out of things to talk about. There are three main cogs for me on what the issues are for this offense. One, it's controlling the line of scrimmage either in run plays or pass plays. we got to fix the issues in the run plan. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but that's obvious. Everybody's talked about it. Number two, and these are not in any particular order. I'm just mm-hmm. naming the three. Number two, it's quarterback decision and quarterback development. Decision. Decision becomes in when to throw the ball, when to throw it away, when to tuck the ball away, when to protect the ball. Devin has been uh, guilty of all those at some point, and he continues to be guilty of those things. I don't know what that is. Decision on pass play. Devin does not have – he has a very average release. From the time he decides to plant that foot and step into it and let it go, it's average. It's average. Now, tack on to that. Uh, It's not bad. Tack on it. Now, when it comes off his hand, it's a nice ball. The spirals can can be tight. Some, somewhat consistently, and he's got decent velocity on it. But an average release time coupled with staring a receiver down makes itself for a very opportunistic defense to jump on his passes and bite. And he does that all the time. And I don't know if his decision-making is development to do that. So is it decision-making? Is it locking on? Is it recognition late? Or whatever it is. Those things have, have, have plagued him. Being careless with the football in traffic. There's too many times that he carries the ball and he's not protecting it in traffic. Sometimes you, and, and, and let me tell you why I believe he's doing this. He's the only guy. He's the only guy that has an opportunity to make a play because it's third and plus 10 or is is fourth and plus 15, and he's got to try to make the play, and he can't be careful. He's got to be hell-bent and going out there and trying to make a play. So a lot of times he's just trying to do something to keep the drive alive and make plays on the offense. And that comes to my third point. Our skill position players don't threaten the defense either on the perimeter or deep on a consistent basis. We don't do it. And when you don't do that, people will gamble. I saw a freshman defensive back lined up yesterday from Detroit pressing for more than 70% of the time because he wasn't scared anybody was going to go past him. He was not, and he was right, and he was right. So we don't have enough threat in our offense, whether it's speed, playmaker, or understanding how to free yourself in traffic to make a defense threatened so they back out of the box or so they play off the ball or they do certain things where they got to play careful and play uh and play field position football as opposed to just putting their hand back and we're coming at you because we don't fear if we make a mistake because we'll make it up. And, and so and, and so talk, speak to this, Marcus, because I've heard you talk about this before. It could be that either it, Michigan's uh, Michigan's receivers don't do a good job uh, getting off getting off press. It could that could or it could be maybe it's a combination of these things. Something else that you've talked about. They just feel like if they come. They're going to get there before before guys get up, but they're going to be able to get there before guys do get deep. Now, Michigan had a few opportunities uh, down the football field. Uh, you had a drop. You had an overthrow, a couple of plays that I could think of. But by and large, you know, you only get a few clicks if, if you're Devin Garner. That, that's still the case for him back there. Well, the thing about Michigan's offense is they're never on the same page at the same time where when Devin does have – time to throw the football, he may misread the coverage, or the wide receivers don't get open. Then there's times when they get open, then the offensive line has a breakdown. But in particular with this game, Michigan, they really didn't do anything well. See, they ran, they have 158 total yards and was winning this game 21-7 to thanks to their defense with a defensive score. So when your leading rusher has 23 yards, that's Derrick Green. See, now – See, when we played Penn State, it was, oh, Fitz, 27 carries for 27 yards. That's not good enough. Well, now you got Green in there, and he has 23 yards on 11 carries. Gardner only passed for 98 yards, 13 to 28. 
with two touchdowns. So he made two great passes and, you know, our tight ends are getting open and, you know, all this stuff. But there were too many drops. The offense doesn't have any identity. This team lacks what I call TNT, toughness and talent. Exactly right. Our TNT is more turnovers and, and uh, 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 you know, uh, time of possession or something <laughs> like that. And I'm and I'm just being honest. I mean, when you watch this game, Iowa moved the ball. You can't use weather as an excuse. Michigan had a lead and still wasn't playing well offensively. The defense put them in a position to win. But what Michigan doesn't do, they don't make any adjustments. See, Iowa made defensive adjustments and offensive adjustments at halftime. See, when you go out there, see, this game reminds me of the Ohio State game in the second half last year where you just show up in the second half, you're a better football team, you know, winning at the half, showed some signs of breakage right before the half because Ohio State got that field goal right before the half. They go into the locker room. They come out they come out and say, we're about to jump on these boys. Iowa had no fear. They were at home. Michigan, see, here's the thing about toughness and talent. It allows you to do two things, win close games and win on the road consistently. <clears throat> That's why Ohio State is doing what they're doing. They have more talent and they're tougher than everybody. This Iowa football team was not better than Michigan yesterday for the first 30 minutes. But in the second 30 minutes, they outclassed them on both sides of the ball. And I I think we got outcoached offensively. I just think we did. When you have 10 first downs and, and, and you're still only four out of 14, you only possess the and, and that's third down conversions. Then you possess the ball for 26 minutes. That's not good enough. We've been saying this since September. So at this point, it is what it is. You can't fix it. You got one regular season game left, and those boys aren't playing. They're going to come in here and try to dial up something special. Trust and believe, but the game will be a lot closer than what people think. So I believe that as well. I think it's going to be a close game. Game is going to be a lot closer than what people think. What makes you say that? Well, Well, it's, 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 we have enough. Michigan, Ohio State. Well, yeah, yes, yes, Tom. Yes, absolutely. And, we have enough players. We have enough talent to compete with anybody. The yeah, reason why we're the reason why we're doing it, no one knows. Everybody's we don't know. Brady, you know, everybody would like to have the answer, but we don't. But there is enough talent, and there is enough growing up and understanding what this means by everybody in that locker room to come play Saturday. Let me say it hey, this let me, way. Let me, let me say it this way. Hey, Tom, 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 let me get this way. Go ahead and finish I, I, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was close at all. Let me say it that way. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say it's yeah. a talented team. I wouldn't be surprised if it's close. All right, let me say one thing here. Uh, I never played football, but I was a, a pretty good golfer and <laughs> on a good good high school golf team that went to the state finals. Sure you were, Tom. So, <laughs> sure you were. So, therefore, I'm an expert. But l- let me just say this. Let me make an analogy. Uh, when playing at home is one thing, playing on your home course is, is one thing, but going on the road and then playing into a in the cold, in a twenty mile an hour wind, that's when you find out if your team is tough or not. Because I if agree. they're not, I agree. you know that wind and that cold is going to kill them. And I, and that's what I thought. Uh, we saw the Michigan offense just die into that wind, and uh, the Funches uh, drops I think were symptomatic of that. And I think Devin's play was symptomatic of that. So if you're and, – and by not being tough, I mean you're 5% off, you know, or 10% off. It's not like you're a pansy, but you're you're not quite there. You're not quite confident in what you're doing, and that shakes your toughness just enough that that cold wind in your face is just going to make you look bad. The other and, thing and I wanted to say, too. I saw it over and over and over again, and, and I saw it yesterday, you know, playing in the wind in the in the second half. Michigan was just uh, dead, you know, on offense. In the and third then, quarter. And then I think defensively, we got wore down. We got worn down by Mark White. Well, sure. He only had 88 yards. Well, and, and, and put this in there. I mean, your, your two middle they, they linebackers, got, two linebackers. Your two linebackers so got, got knocked they out of the game. Have, well, got worn down this is Michigan, no and two linebackers going down. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just not going to be an excuse that I think that, you know, this is Michigan. We, we should have enough depth and talent. To, to stick two other guys in there, the expectation is for the position. So I think we got pounded off uh, defensively when it mattered most because they got worn down. They yeah, played. Be, yeah, hold they on. played. Well, hold on. Because Mark, 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 hold on. Wiseman was running the ball before they went out. Yeah, now this, this is this is first play of the game. He ran through tackle. two or three guys. You know, they, so they got yeah. worn down because they are what they are. Uh, but no, they then got, yeah. it was fourth and two. Mark Wiseman took a two yard run and went nine yards and pounded people in the end zone with 12 yeah. minutes left. I knew right then. There was going to be blood in the water because that single play told Iowa we're tougher than these people. We are tougher. No, that's right. I'm they with don't you on that one. It. Absolutely. And, and with 12 minutes left, even when Devin was driving, let's talk about 
like Iowa's defense, how they stripped the ball in the cold when it mattered, when the game was on the line. I love our defense in the first half. I think they played well. But you got to do it for four quarters. And if you can't do it when the momentum changes, when 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 Uncle Mo leaves your sideline and goes to the other sideline, what are you going to do then? Any defense can play well when you're winning. What are you going to do when the game's on the line? And, and so I know Greg Madison. I played for him. His motto is get the ball back. OK, stop the run, keep it inside and in front and don't give up any big plays. You know, I, I guess for, for me and looking at this, I understand what you guys are saying about the, the defense and it, it not being totally up to snuff that there were some the things that they, that they didn't do well in the second half. I just feel like uh, on a on a day where you get four turnovers uh, on a day where you get a defensive score that you, you got to have. You got to have an assist on the on the other side. When I'm looking at you, you mentioned time of possession. Between your linebackers getting knocked out and the fact that you could not get any sustained drives, you wind up in the in the third and fourth quarters, uh, eight min eight minutes twenty eight seconds, nine minutes fifty five seconds top for for Iowa. And you know I understand that that part of that is a self fulfilling prophecy that it part of it is on the defense to get off the football field. But if you're getting off the football field, uh, you know you're forcing them to, to to punt the football or you're getting a turnover. By the time the game gets in, you know deep into the fourth quarter, man, you get now you are getting run over if you if you've been on the field the whole second half and you don't even have all your guys. That's not that's not an excuse. Like you said, you should have guys you could plug in there, but I think it's in part a reason. If you don't want your defense to be on the field the entire game or the entire second half, then get off the field. Don't blame the offense for putting you back out there. You still have an opportunity to get a three and out. That's just the way it goes. I played on a team where Notre Dame came in the stadium and we had three turnovers inside the 50 and didn't crack. So, I, I mean, I've seen it done. I saw it done last week with uh, Nebraska and Michigan State. See, they turned the ball over five times inside their own territory, which led to 21 Michigan State points. So, my thing, and, and that gave them a big enough cushion to stay ahead of Nebraska, even though they got creased in the run game. But Michigan's defense didn't do it in the second half after coming out. Um, with a halftime break, and and maybe that's where the inexperience and youth and toughness and depth and all that stuff comes into play, Sam. But they had a chance to win that game, yeah. okay, convincingly. But Iowa was a tougher football team when it mattered most. And their offense, if you go back to that first half, they were driving up and down the field, but but the drives got nullified and negated by turnover. Sam, you are sitting across from someone a little over 15 years ago that had his heels, his heels on the goal line in Happy Valley, and they had first and 10. They never scored. I hear you. I hear you. But, you know, I I think that that team, that that defense – I mean, you, you look at all the guys. Part on of it is attitude, not, Sam. Part of it is part of it has part of you have to attitude. say. Exactly part right. of you have to say to yourself, not today. Not today. We're not losing not this game. We're up twenty-one yeah. seven at the half in somebody else's house. That's a culture. And, and then you're going to run off seventeen unanswered points with twelve minutes left, and then really your only chance is to go down. His with, defensive with line coach left. was there. So hey, we got to protect the football, Devin. Get out of bounds, slide. You got stripped. When you watch Hitchens play. We talk about linebacker play. When you watch him, who's probably the best linebacker in this conference, all he does is run around and smack people. He's kind of limited physically, but he plays with an attitude and a toughness level that gives Iowa enough confidence to go out and smother other offenses. Now, 158 yards is not good enough. It's just not. Now, both teams had 150-something yards. Okay, weather. But those drop passes, those missed opportunities, blown coverages, and just getting punched in the mouth by a running back who's been banged up all year who just said, forget two yards. I'm going for the touchdown with 12 minutes left. We have, we didn't have enough oomph, enough it factor to regroup and come back and at least get three to seven more points to at least force overtime. I hear you. Hey, yeah. look, I, I am not – <laughs> I keep coming back to the same point. Oh, it's not at you. We just I, no, talking, I, I, baby. I, I, I hear you. Feel, you you I feel keep, defensive now? I, no, no, I don't feel defensive. I'm, I'm coming back to the same point because I'm looking at the chart, guys, and I'm saying you're right. The defense didn't at the end of the game. I mean, you, you talk about that play. They came out there. They got cooked on the on the slant. Your safety got got cooked on that. Period. No no excuse for that. Touchdown. But the next three drives, man, four plays and they're out of there. Punt. Three plays. They're out of there. Punt. Four plays. Interception. Do something. Do something on the other side of the ball to keep them off the football. They got the three or four and out well, on, those, fir- on those plays. Ten first downs don't help you at all. 
In, in a four-quarter ball game, that means you average two and a half first downs oh. per quarter with a 21-7 to seven lead for half of the game. Yeah. So and 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 so point taken, Sam. Two point, point taken. Derek Green, eleven <laughs> carries, twenty three yards. His longest run was nine yards. Okay, so that gives you ten for fourteen. So we're still talking about offensive line play. We're still talking about not being able to move the ball and keep the chains going. Four out of fourteen on third down. Michigan doesn't possess the ball. Okay, thank God, goodness for this defense. For, for at least giving them a chance to go up seven, get some momentum, create some short fields. But that mm-hmm. offense is not good enough. We've seen it. I'm just going to say it like it is. Okay? I watched film on this. I showed you tape mm-hmm. yesterday. Mm-hmm. I watched film on this offense. There's breakdown still in that offensive line. I'm starting to think, too, it's a strength and conditioning issue Well, hold on. Let me, as well. <clears throat> let me say this Don't as well. Don't let me get on that. <clears throat> let me say this as well. When you talk about the teams who play the kind of football that we were told that we're going to be playing – downhill, pro style, under the center, come at you. They still threaten you deep and on the perimeter. These guys still have guys that can go by you. They still have guys you can toss sweep and you better get to the you better get to the corner or you're gonna be running toward the sideline. Next thing you know, your shoulders are turning up field because that joke gonna put his ears back and he's starting to he's starting to separate from everybody else. You still gotta threaten the team on the perimeter and deep. At least make them think or know and show on film. We'll go by you. Yes, we'll go by you. you we'll know, stick, uh, quarterback will stick that, that quarterback <laughs> will stick that that hand on that on that on that sucker's belly, and then go back, and he's gonna be right over your head. You still hey, got to be able to do it. To me, the point is this: <clears throat> you got a defense that's maybe seven out of ten. You got an offense that's probably three out of ten. So that that's the team. That's mm-hmm. how it is. You take him to Iowa City and play him in the cold, into the wind, against an Iowa team that's better than their record and has a good defense. You know, you're you're just in trouble, and and so that's that's where the program is right now. And I think they, if they would have would play it again today, the outcome would be the same. And, and you know what I'm saying? Real quick, how do you? Your question is, how do you win the turnover battle and lose the game? <laughs> that, that's I, I know that's what you want, but we have some things to address. But that's what you want to know. And I know and you got to get to they, a break. They, they wanted four to one. I mean, this wasn't just <laughs> this wasn't just oh they squeaked by and to ask and had a score. I'm like, look, I the way I see it, y'all. I don't see a bunch of killers on defense right now. I mean, you, you got a few guys that, that could be. Jake Ryan could get there eventually when he gets back fully healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Frank Clark could be that. He played really well this game. But you got – I mean, you you don't have 97 guys on, on this on this defense yet. And yet, look at the performance that they turned in yesterday. They play, they're, they're playing a lot of fre- – not young guys, a lot of freshmen and redshirt freshmen on, on that side of the ball too. And yet you see – you see that kind of effort. You see some guys at this stage of the season playing better I agree. football. I agree. There are some guys that have shown improvement and are standing out. Frank Clark is one of those guys. So we'll get back to it on the on the other side of the football because here's what you gotta here's what you gotta guard against. I mean, Marcus, you, you're on you're on offense. I mean, you're on defense and stand. Uh, look, you, I know you didn't play on an offense like this, but let's pretend for a second that you did. You walk into the locker room and you're like, well, damn. I, I heard you like at some no, point. No, what you say is, hey, Charles, when you get your hand on that punt, you're going to have to take it back, baby. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, train, keep running greasy. Stick with it because you know why? Iowa had us down 21-7 in this, in this stadium down the street. And all we said on defense was, hey, we're going. I had two interceptions in the first half. It's an attitude. It's a right. mindset. Right. You got to go in the locker room and say, hey, hey, who's going to make a play here? Right. Well, gonna who's going to make a play? And, and so the reason why I say that is now you got to have someone someone on that, on that team, someone in your league. Leadership base saying, okay, hold up, fellas. You know, defense. I, I know you're mad six. defense. No, you're mad defense. Hey, let, let, let's let's stay together. You got to do whatever you, you got to do to win on either side of the ball. And if your offense has been struggling all year, then your defense or somebody on special teams is going to have to give you some points or create some field. Some position. more, some more points. More points. Some more points. More than points. They some more yesterday. field position. Okay. I mean, the defense played well against Northwestern, gave them a chance to win too. So hey, but it's just a mindset, Sam. See, at Michigan, we don't blame. We don't go into the locker room and say, come on, offense, y'all stinking it up. Or defense, oh, you ever going to stop somebody? That's what Indiana and those teams do. At Michigan, when it's about the team, it's about what are we going to do? What can I do individually better? I mean, when I make that tackle, do I got to rip it out? If I get an interception, do I pitch it to Charles? Dre, hey, against Ohio State 97, our offense was stinking it up. You had a, a, a punt return, a pick six. And then we were in the fight of our lives. So, I mean, one receiver, not one receiver caught a pass that game. Only tight ends and running backs. So, whatever you got to do, and, and and we were up 20 to zero. So, hey, whatever you got to do on either side of the ball to get the win, that's what you got to do. All right, we hey, gotta- hey, hey, hey. 
I could have played with you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, hey, we but, gotta, that, but the 80 team would have whooped that 97. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, get to a break, Sam. We, we got to get to a break. Deals. We got to get to a break. Back on the other side here <laughs> on the Go Blue Wolverine Radio Hour on Sports Talk 1050 WTKA. <laughs> 